decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. got nothing. Well, as a matter of fact, you have. No, sir. I'm old, and times have been hard, and I just ain't got a nothing thing. You alone here? Alone? I wouldn't do that. There ain't no need to. Why don't you go away? Go on away and leave me be. You got two horses out in your corral there. I don't have any horse at all since I lost mine to a gopher hole this morning. I want to buy that mare from you. I'll pay you a fair price. I can't sell her. All right, I'll take the Indian pony, the Pinto. You can't sell him either. Those horses belong to you? Well, you sure. And what are you talking about? You can sell them to me. Well, it, it, it's, it's just a word I use. It, it don't mean nothing. You sure are jumpy. Well, I, I, I just ain't used to people. I live alone. I have all my life. I know the mountains and the woods, not people. Is that why you try to pull that gun on me? Look, I'm on my way to Abilene to pick up a job, and then I'm going home to Virginia. I got about 2,000 miles ahead of me and nothing under me but my feet. I got $100 I'll give you for that mare out there or the other horse, whichever you're not riding. And then maybe I'll get home to Virginia before I'm as old as you are. Well, uh, I gotta think. Why don't you uh, have some coffee or something and give me time to think? Who's that? Uh, nobody. You had the old man fool old northerners Jim. Talking about buying a horse. I know why you're here. And so does my friend. Yeah, I caught one. Got me one while he was gone. Walked in here with a story full of holes, figuring we wouldn't catch on. Put down the gun, Jim. Huh? Hello, Jamal. Hello, Earl. You mean you two know each other? Yeah. We used to ride together. Up until about a month ago when I found out what kind of a man I was riding with.
any trouble while I was gone? Except for him, quiet as a grave. How about you? No sign of anything. Uh-huh. I think you've seen the last of them two for a while. Can't take that chance. I'm gonna ride out tonight around midnight. Be on the safe side. Yeah, uh, I'll take the first guard watch. You need time to get ready. Now, just what do you think you're talking about? We're gonna ride out? Relax, Corey. He ain't got nothing to do with you. He... He's got a prisoner tucked away in the shed. That was his horse you wanted to buy. Pinto. Another one's mine. You want foot? So let's come full circle, too. First time I met you, you was looking to buy a horse. Where are you taking him, your prisoner? Fort Sumner, New Mexico territory. Over the mountain? San Flores Pass. I've been trailed by some of his friends. At least I think they're his friends. Couple of real hard cases. Come through just before Jamal showed up. Nosing around, asking questions. They got their little old heart set on taking him from me. So he says. But we'll be out and going by midnight. <laughs> before, when you said we're taking him, I thought you were mistakenly referring to you and me. I feel the same way about that as you do. Well, I don't see how you could. It wasn't you tied to that state. I ain't going into that with you, Corey. I'm all talked out. You believe what you want to believe. I rode along before I met you, and I did just fine. That's the way it's going to be and has been for a month. I'm sure you'll do all right. Oh, I'm going to do just fine, all right, because I'm going back home to Willow Hill to make peace with my brother, finish with these wander years and this bounty hunting with you, and sleep in the same bed for two nights running for the first time in four years, and get me some nice, big, feathery pillows. <laughs> They sure don't sound like living to me. That's because you a mountain man, Jim. Last of the breed. Old Corey there, he's a gentleman born and bred. Big plantation with white columns. Over 200 running around smiling their gums dry. Calling, Mass Earl, Mass Earl. All right, that's enough out of you. Well, it's true, isn't it? Or it was for the war turned you inside out. Uh, you want me to fix the plate for your prisoner? No, you can wait. I'm going out and see about my horse. Uh, he's changed. He's changed bad. He's come out real bitter. Maybe I had something to do with that. Well, I'll come. Ask him. All I remember is the pain. And this. Yeah. I've seen that before. I've seen him do it. A long time ago. I didn't know the car was faster to go. What you doing? Showing you old war wound, Corey. You just keep on needling me, boy, and you're gonna get just what you're asking for. That's what you want, isn't it? For me to draw on you? Now, now boys, don't get yourselves... We're right back where we started, aren't we? That's your choice, Corey. No, it was your choice when you picked your Kiowa brother over me. I couldn't do anything else, damn you. Not at the time. I would have gotten us both killed. But I come back for you, didn't I? I cut you free. Yeah, but while you were thinking it over, they were peeling me like a burned grape. You're still the one cut out on us. That's right, and I wouldn't join up with you again if my life depended on it. Then you're right. We're right back where we started. What I learned and what I thought you learned don't count against a pail of water. I learned something that wiped out everything that went before. The only reason that we rode together is that we thought we could depend on each other no matter what else happened. Well, I learned different. I'm gonna carry the scars of that lesson with me right to my grave. Given the thought. Fire crossing's a fair piece from here. It's the nearest big town. Besides, they know me up there. I don't know. Where's Jamal? Down the barn, I guess. 
I heard about you, Jim. They call you Northingest Jim. Yep, that's my name. I heard you're a good man. Yeah, I was when I was younger. Ain't fit to light kindling nowadays. But back in the 40s, or the 50s even, when it wasn't so crowded out here, you know I'd go a whole year without seeing a white face, except for a snow rabbit, another grizzlies, beaver in the traps. Got me my name in 41. They call me Northerners, because I pushed the furthest north of any man, up to the pole down here. It was so cold, friend, that when you talked, damned if the words didn't freeze solid out of your mouth. Doesn't look worth the trouble. What did he do? Wrestle some chickens? Killed a 16-year-old boy so he could steal his boots. Oh, oh, steal! Is that a fact? Ah, about six months ago, we fought Sumner. All right, Travis. I'm gonna take the gag off this one last time. This garbage claims he's got friends. I'm gonna take him from me. Right or wrong, I could use another pair of eyes. Did you hear him, sir? He calls me garbage. Where are you from? Georgia, sir. Ankle deep ashes and blood, my Georgia. He's a Johnny Reb, just like you. The difference is you ain't gonna die for it. There's another difference, friend. I didn't kill any kid for a pair of boots. You sure I did? You gonna take his word over mine? Sir, a jury might listen to me if I was alive to face one. Sir, I don't much like my chances of reaching Fort Sumner alive. I appeal to you, sir, as a white man. Don't let him take me out of here alone. He got to you, didn't he? What are you talking about? He wants you to go along with us real bad. Ha, <laughs> ha, not a chance. He don't know it, but he's doing me a favor. Mountains north of here is a bushwhacker's dream. He says he's got friends gonna take him from me. Ah, you make out fine, just like you said. That Indian pony's his. He was up in the Guadalupe's for a couple of months. Got the feeling something happened up there. Wouldn't be surprised if the Apaches wasn't looking for him, too. I guess you do have a problem, don't you? I'll tell you what. You just tell them that you're blood brothers with a Kiowa chief. That's over and done with. You two at it again. I ain't never seen nothing like it. You know, you remind me of a couple I knew up near the Canadian border. Only they was married. <laughs> we got the light behind us. Let's move. Hey, Jim, you all right? Corey, did you move it? Keep your forehead down. It's too about that, old man. You took care of that in your lifetime. I wish I would tell you a story, but I ain't got time. It looks like you got yourself a horse, mister. Take care of him. Take care of this black boy, Earl.
You gonna take his horse? I guess I'll take his horse. He doesn't have any use for it. For some, there's five days northeast of here. It's a little bit out your way, but not that much. Why don't you come along with me? I'll split the bounty with you. I don't want your bounty. You can keep it. That Travis is wanted dead or alive. He's a pretty mean old reb. If half of what he says is true, I'd rather take him in stiff across the saddle. What do you say? Deal or no deal? We ride together this one last time, or do I do it alone? Travers on some chain. Do we take him? There's a lot of miles between here and the mountains. We can pick our spot and our time. You ain't forgetting. We need Travers alive and able to talk. We're splitting up. You keep trailing them. I'll pick up the others. We've been here. I know. We doubled back? I thought I saw something. fast enough. Tied him to a tree and rode off. Hey, don't. Don't let him, Corey. Don't let him talk like that. How many Apache did you kill? How many? I don't know. Three, anyway. But I had two. It was them or me. I was in their village. Where? Guadalupe is. She started screeching. She? Squaws? You killed the squaws? They wasn't there was a difference how they sit a horse. I tell you, they're yeah. worse than a man. Well, who are you to judge me anyhow, bounty man? Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Tell me, who is it you see every time you pull the trigger? Is it the old massa? I bet it ain't the old massa's daughter. <laughs> It's only to save him for the hangman. You're gonna help me. I know you're gonna help me. Just don't let anyone get to him first. years old, Spaniards in picture book armor. Dead men, skeletons. And then the mine ain't even been scratched. I could take you there. I could take you there now, just the two of us. I could take you there. Like it? Yeah. He didn't ask me. You got a big heart, Mr. Corey. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Where's the horse? 
house is a bitch. Hold on! This is private property. Overland stage stop. You better get out the way, lady. We're public and in a hurry. Van Ride, get on your mounts and get off my property. Please, forgive my boy, Mrs. The Bayless. Your what? He gets a bit carried away with himself sometimes, but he's really a good boy. Your boy? Well, my hired servant, actually, since, uh, you know, we freed them. Well, he was a gun. It's me a show, Mrs. Bayless. A child needing a toy. They're all children. That's true. I'll put on some coffee. Oh, Master Corey, sir? You mean to tell me this year ain't real? What you waiting for? Dig in. What will? Where's his spoon? Must have lost it crossing the river. He's lying. He probably threw it away somewhere. Got me chained up like a dog. Now he wants me to eat like one. Chance at gold. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Look at you. It's finally come. Hold it. There's something on the tree. It's blood. War paint. Let's get out of here. From there. Where did it come from? Let's head for the border.
Wasetcha! Panataliska! Ewa! Shanta Galis! Shahaneha! Ewa! 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 Night safe as a tick on a bear. Have your fun while you can. He don't uh, seem to appreciate you boys, howdy, Cory. Sheriff? Sure. I was just telling my deputy about the riders came through yesterday. You and your friend might be advised to swing east where you hit the hills. Sheriff is on a dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Where you been, Earl? You were due last week. Oh, I ran into a little transportation problem. <laughs> Corey, we swing east. We lose two weeks. Oh, you work that out. It's your problem now. My problem? Oh, I'm getting kind of trail weary, boy. Halfway to Fort Sumner? Well, shoot, boy, didn't I tell you? I got a job waiting for me in Abilene. It's nowhere near Fort Sumner. <laughs> Bank's still in business, I trust. So am I, lover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go get a drink. <laughs> Don't you go away. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Cory? Cory, where you been? Oh, Cory, Cory, where you been? Oh, I don't like your friend. <laughs> he makes me uncomfortable. He's no friend of mine. We just rode together. You ain't changed, Cory. We had a deal and you're quitting again. Quitting a second time. All your talk about your high-class southern background, you ain't no better than trash. Where's your gun? Sheriff, keep things quieter, he said. I'm about to prove him wrong. You've been wanting to do this ever since we met, ain't you? Get yourself a gun. We don't have to draw on each other, Corey. We never done it before. We don't have to do it now. We just take Travis on a fort Sumner like you said, like you agreed to. Because I don't know if I want to kill you. It's been a long time coming, and there's no way to turn back. Hold it, both of you. I want it, Earl. Don't have to be here. You can come in my office and do it. But you're going to unbuckle that belt. 
and hand it over. People forget awful easy. A year ago, those four men had this town bleeding. You got paid for what you done. You're afraid to come out of your houses! You didn't ask me for my gun then! Times are changing, Earl. Don't you know? Your kind? For the West, maybe. For a few years, anyway. What'd you expect? It's all right, honey. I don't need any gun. <laughs> Come to help you. I know. Thank you. you, I wouldn't take the San Flores Pass through the mountains. He says his boys would do most anything to get him loose. He's the only one knows where some gold mine is at. All right, quiet him down, cow. It's time I moved out. I'm near 68 because I keep my nose on my own face. But what in thunder made you pick on Bounty on? Wasn't the road tough enough? You know, you the first ones asked. Most people figure they know. They think with the paper in my pocket, I'm just out to kill. Every stripe on my back, one white. Every time I was sold, one white. For the times I heard, the cavalry hymn is worth a thousand dollars. For the times I was a stake put up in a poker game, 
Lost or won. I got a piece of bottom there. You're saying they're wrong. That's what I'm saying. Get this prisoner, Cal. My prisoner. I'm somebody. Can you understand that? I'm somebody with a calling. I'm Jamal David. I'm a bounty hunter. And that's a long way from being a stake in a poker game. All right, let's get him out of here. Dead range, your scaffold steps begin. Well, you'll never see the other side, bounty man. Don't you know that by now? Corey knew. You want it dead or alive? There ain't that much more to go. <laughs> oh, no. I know you, black boy. I know you inside and out. You can't kill me. Not like this. The one thing could save your life, and you can't do it. Take it. Son! Take it. You're mounted, you're cut free, and here's the gun. Go on, take it, why don't you? Take it! Ah, we go right, oh, ain't we? But I was right, wasn't I? You had to turn me loose first, and that makes me right. Having a little grub. You inviting me? Uh, uh, no lady uh, social. Uh, uh, I got to thinking. That man owes you money, I thought. Can't just let him ride out of here owing you money. Well, shoot, boy. Right's right and wrong's wrong. I mean, you let a man owe you money, and pretty soon, he wants everything you got. Come well, on, shoot, boy.
My gun. My gun. Where is it? Right yourself. I can see it. Never mind, leave it. All the ammo's with the horses. Six bullets last. Do that. Do what? 
That's fifteen hundred dollars going down here. Fifteen hundred? You told me a thousand. What difference? You lost him for me. Fifteen hundred. I don't give up that easy. Sorry about you losing your bounty and all. Part of him was yours, just like always. Yeah, oh, well, just for this time, like we said. Suit yourself. Where are you heading? Fort Sumner? No reason to now. You know, I heard about Abilene. They're having a lot of trouble up there. Maybe we could... Maybe you could stop by there and pick up a bounty. You don't have to worry about me, Nut. I get along. No, I don't worry about you at all. <laughs> I've learned that. Where are you heading? Back to Virginia? I don't know. Virginia's a long way off. Of course, I think I traveled about three times that distance since we've been split up. Corey, there wasn't nothing I could do to get you out back in that Indian camp. Not without getting us both killed. Yeah, I know. I suppose I knew it back then, too, but <laughs> somehow knowing it didn't ease the pain any. It did real fine. Did I? I seen a lot of men at the stake the two years I spent in that Kiowa camp. You did real fine. I was counting on that. Oh, you were, were you? Sure. Hell State had killed you right off. I knew you'd stick it. Give me a chance to cut you free. Yeah. Well, that's over and done with, just like all the times we've had together, good or bad. What kind of a town is Abilene? Oh, that's pretty wild. Ain't exactly heading towards Virginia. I think you and I better have a little talk. And do a little figuring, too. I don't think we got enough money to make it to Abilene. Well, we could always sell you a horse. Sell my horse? A Cory, you bird-headed white cracker. You ain't never gonna change. 